Hi there, I'm Coach Todd, head of coach of OnlyMensTriathlon.com. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about my Ironman Canada 2014 race report. So I'm going to go over how the race went for me, what I thought about it, some things I liked, some things that I didn't like. This was my 11th Ironman. Just to give you some background on my previous races, so you can see what I have to compare with. I've raced Ironman Canada and Penticton seven times, Ironman France and Nice in 2010, Montreal Blanc last year in 2013, and Ironman Hawaii back in 2008. So I've done a lot of different races, and uh, quite a few of them have been pretty challenging races, which is kind of nice because then I can kind of compare, well, how do those races compare to Ironman Whistler or Ironman Canada? Now, this was the second year for Ironman Canada being held in Whistler, and I had a few athletes who did the race last year, and they gave me some good feedback on the race. Um, it's funny that only one of the athletes actually returned back to the race. Many of the athletes said it was a fantastic race, but it was, it was very hard. The part that they found the hardest of Ironman was the last 30 kilometers on the bike. So as you're coming, coming back into Whistler, a lot of it is uphill. And the, the common response was, that's just a, a cruel joke. But I figured, you know what, I'm a pretty good biker and I, I'm always up for a challenge. So I decided this is going to be my year to do Ironman Whistler and I wanted, and I wanted to see how, how I could do. Now the other big draw for me was the timing of the race. Having the race at the end of July freed up a whole month of the summer for my family. So having August off is really fantastic. Now Whistler is a small town located on the west coast of Canada. Now it is known as a, a resort town for skiing in the winter and mountain biking in the summer. And of course, it was the host town of the 2010 Winter Olympics. When I arrived in Whistler, I was totally impressed. I loved the small town resort feel for the village, the amazing trails throughout the woods, and the tranquil lakes surrounded by the mountains. I enjoyed the lake so much so that the day before the race, what I did is I did a 5K run. And I did a 5K run, short run around Lost Lake, and I I just stopped and enjoyed the sunrise sitting on one of the many floating docks and there were no sounds around, just the occasional voices of runners along the Lost Lake Trail and some swimmers in the lake. It was just a simply uh, amazing experience to do and it was just the day before the race. It was just so calm and peaceful. It was a really a great way just to kind of let my nerves go and just kind of relax and just think about what I was going to do on the next day. The day before Ironman, uh, the Ironman event organizers put on a race called Iron Kids. And Iron Kids was a race that all the kids could do. Uh, you know, they signed up the day before and they could do a short distance race. And they were all ba they're categorized based on their age. And it was so much fun to watch these little guys go. Some of those guys are so fast, I was thinking, I'm glad you're not in my way because you guys are sprinting, you look so fast. But you know what, it was so much fun to watch and it seemed like everyone was having a really good, good, good time out there. One of the cool things about the race was that each kid got to finish under the same finish line as their parents. I also got a t-shirt and the slogan I read, finisher, I am strong and will not quit. I can go the distance, I am an iron kid. You know, so that was pretty cool to see those kids walking around with that t-shirt on. And the next day, you know, the parents would be hoping that they'd be wearing their Iron Man finisher t-shirt too. So it's kind of neat that the kids and the adults would both get a finisher t-shirt. Okay, now let's go on to the race. The swim is a 3.8 kilometer or 2.4 mile swim that takes place in Alta Lake. The course is two loops in Alta Lake with the direction of swimming being counterclockwise. A fun part about this course that makes it a little bit unique is that the swim start is actually a deep water start. So just like being in Hawaii, everyone has to swim out to, to the starting area, which is you know over your head, so you kind of have to tread water, which is kind of a unique experience. And you line up between two buoys, the cannon goes off, and then you go. The start of the swim was just simply spectacular. Uh, the, the, the weather was, was really nice, it wasn't that cold. I had my little toucan, I didn't really need it. Uh, but what was neat to see was when you look at the, the lake, the cool thing to see was when you looked at the lake, there was a mist coming off the lake and it was just almost like a magical, magical view or a magical uh, moment of the race. I thought this was so neat. I remember seeing pictures the year before, I just thought it was because it was so cold out. But it's, it wasn't cold at all, just this mist coming off the lake. And I even grabbed a selfie there of myself before I started the swim. 
but it was a really such a picturesque uh, start to the race. Now when the cannon went off with a gun or however they started the race, um, I found uh, my position to be quite good. What I did is I started on the very far left side uh, of the start line. And it was, it was kind of funny for me, I was swimming along and after taking about 10 or so strokes, I'm looking around and there's no one around. And I couldn't see anyone to the right, I couldn't see anyone to the left. I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, am I swimming the wrong direction? <laughs> Should I be going the other direction? I just thought this is, what kind of bad mistake would that be if I was going the wrong direction? I said, oh, relax, Todd. I'm sure you're going the right way. You gotta be going the right way. But I guess, uh, obvious, uh, one of the faster swimmers on the far left-hand side. And so that was a very unique experience for me. I had no one around me for a long time. Actually, I was swimming down. I didn't have anyone around me until one of the first corners, and then I kind of merged over, and then I found all the rest of the swimmers. But for me, that was a pretty funny experience, thinking I was going the wrong direction in Ironman. You can see from my swim picture there that I was swimming with a bike jersey on. I like to swim with a bike jersey because it gives me a protection from the sun on my shoulders and then I have access to three large pockets in the back so that I can put my nutrition on during the bike. So then I have uh, gels on uh, the first two pockets and then on the far side I have my salt tablets. And that's a great way for me to carry my nutrition is having big pockets for the bike jersey. Now the temperature of the lake was fine, no concerns at all about being too cold or warm. The toughest part for me was the first stretch heading out as I found that the sun was just coming over the top of the mountains and shining brightly into our eyes, especially if you're breathing onto the left side. Especially if you're breathing onto the left side like I do. So it was, I was turning here and the, and the sun was right in my eyes, so it was kind of blinding me every time I took a stroke. And around the first corner too, so when you first left hand turn, you're swimming right into the mountains and the sun is right on top and that was a little bit difficult too. So basically what I did is I just followed people's feet in front of me and every now and then I do a little bit of breaststroke to make sure I can see where that big uh, turn buoy is for my next left hand turn. But that was a little challenging part too is the sun in your eyes. But once I made that left hand turn and I'm breathing on the left side, now the sun's on to my right. So I was no problem there for the next uh, couple of turns. But then coming back in, the sun was back in my eyes. But you do get, eventually get used to it, but that was one thing that I found a little bit tricky. The other thing too is I, I really enjoyed the swim, but I kept wondering uh, why are we doing two loops? The lake was big enough, I think, that we could do one loop. So I'm not sure why we had two loops, but nonetheless, I still, I still enjoyed having two loops, but I think it would be kind of fun to do one loop swim for sure. While we were swimming, the transition area quietly waited for us. After we exit the lake, the first thing we need to do, well, after we visit the wetsuit strippers to take off our wetsuit, is to go grab our swim to bike bags so that uh, we can grab them and get ready to bike. And these were all neatly lined up. Fred uh, Shrew from Hampton, New Hampshire, and Matthew Kadawa. Oh, there's Todd! Todd! Jim Nixon and Todd Malcolm. We've got Lisa Walker out of Washington yep. and Michael. I was pleased with my swim time of being 105. Kent followed a few minutes behind. Darcy Olsen, Michelle Olsen, how about Jill Fonson, and Gary West. Go Kent! Go Kent! Ah, NBC, Maria Watson. You should see if you can get over to the track. Another Whistler athlete, Adam Moore. The transition area quickly became full of athletes rushing to grab their bikes and to get some sunscreen on their bodies by the awesome volunteers. Now there was a quite a run from the transition area to the mountain line for the bike. What I chose to do was to run with my shoes in my hand and put the shoes on after I crossed the mountain line. And by doing so, that saved me some seconds. Okay, now onto the bike portion. Now this is the fun part of the, of the course. This is the, this is the part that a lot of people are kind of dreading about because it's, it's supposed to be really challenging. And so this is 112 miles or 180 kilometers. Now there's been a lot of talk about the difficulty of Whistler's bike course. I think the challenging, 
I think the challenging course was a big factor of why Ironman Canada did not sell out. I think people don't want a crazy hard Ironman. And so I was going to figure, I was going to find out today well, how hard is this actual bike course. The bike course is 180 kilometers or 112 miles. It starts off from Alta Lake and gradually makes its way to the first significant climb of the day, which is up to the Callahan Valley. So we drove the course two days before. I like to drive the course beforehand so I know what I'm getting myself into. And so I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is, this is going to be a tough, tough climb. And so that's the first climb. It's about 25K into the course and you've got to go up, 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 up. And it's a gradual up. And so it's, uh, you just kind of, I think, you just shift into an easy gear and away you go. And you know that everyone has to do the same climb. So just put your head down, just focus on spinning instead of pushing a hard gear. Now just an aside about gearing, I bought a new bike this year and so I had the, had the chance to pick uh, you know, what kind of gears and what kind of cranks and things. So I chose to get a compact crank in the front, it was a 50-34 in the front and then on the gear ratio in the back was the 11-28. I remember when I ordered this bike I thought well, how is that going to work out? Is that going to be too easy? Am I going to run out of gears? Especially for the flats. And you know what? I never did. So it's a good gear selection. So if you're thinking about doing this race, you, you want to know what kind of gear ratio to get. I really enjoyed the 5034 in the front and then the 1128 on the back. And there was a couple of hills where I thought, I know I probably could have had a 30 on the back, but the 28 was, it was really fine and it really helped me spin up the hills. Okay, let's get back to the first climb, which is going up to Callahan Valley. So now when I was climbing on my bike, what I, what I do is I have my bike computer on right in front of me and the displays that I like to look at are the first one is power so how much effort am I putting out and the other one is percent grade percent grade so that it tells you how steep the, the hill is becoming and so I know that once that grade gets up to you know about four or five I go okay I, it's time to get out of the arrow get up on top relax my arms and then just start spinning because then you know the grade is going up the other thing I do is I watch the power, so I don't want to be pushing too hard. I want to keep my power in the correct zone because I know that I've got a long day ahead of me. So I don't need to go crazy up this hill. Even though I think I probably could, I need to hold back, stay within the proper uh, wattage so that I'm not going to be uh, you know, too tired you know, a couple hours down the road. After the reaching the top of Callahan, the fun really began. Now we get to come screaming down the hills that we took so long to climb up. Now some of, the, some of the descents are quite fast because we're coming down hills that, with a grade about 10%. So you're coming down pretty quick. There's a couple of corners that were a little bit tight but most people were slowing down. They had good people out there, good volunteers saying slow down, slow down, which is good. We didn't have any rain or the winds weren't strong at all. So coming around the corners, coming down the hills were really good. My shot. Is that Todd? Todd, yeah, you're in that Todd group. The coach. Did you get him? <laughs> Dude, he's totally in this. I got this. Woo! If you look at this section here of Tim on the bike, you know, Tim is doing really good. He's like he's in a really good position in, in the race. And you can see that person behind him, I think he's drafting, is pretty close. So hopefully maybe just down the road that person would, um, would pass Tim. But there was some drafting on the course for sure. And I even saw some people in front of me, uh, that, that, you know, the draft marshals came up and they got a couple of penalties. So uh, the draft marshals are out and try not to draft the best you can. Now the next section of the bike is to Whistler. And here we have some climbing again, but not too much. So relatively low grade, we're looking at like maybe a three or 4% grade. The crowds at Whistler were just awesome though. I just loved seeing the people on the side of the road cheering us on. It was just, it gave you that little extra oomph, a little extra um, uh, encouragement to keep going. Now after Whistler is the descent to Pemberton, 
which on your profile looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But if you look at these little peaks there, don't forget about those little, little peaks because some of those are really steep hills and some of them are actually uh, good climbs and you actually have to go up 11%. But the nice thing about these uh, little hills is that they're not that long. So you're going to be up and down and uh, not too, too uh, uh, so you're going to be up and down them in no time. Although just get ready for that because some of them are 11%. 11% is, is a good climb. So make sure when you're training for this race, you do some good, good sized hills. Now I'm on the coming down the descent side towards Pemberton and I'm watching the display on my bike and watching the total distance and I can see that I'm getting close to, close to 90 kilometers and in my head I thought that the special needs was at 90 kilometers so when 90 kilometers came and went I'm like I guess it's not the special needs so we just kept on going until we came to Pemberton and I think almost as you come out of Pemberton Pemberton is not a very very big town at all but just as you come out that's where the special needs was and the volunteers are perfect there they see your number coming beforehand and then the radio ahead and then they get your bag ready and you come along you get your bag take what you need out and then you carry on and the section here from Pemberton to the turnaround which is about 20 or 22 kilometers is pretty flat so this is a good time for you to get get in the arrow position focus on nutrition focus on pacing and just make sure that you're doing you know your effort is staying in check you're not going too hard for me it was a good time to stretch out my back and just uh, just to see how I'm doing and just stay focused on my uh, task at hand. The thing I didn't like about this part though is that it was the, the road, there's a good section of the road that was pretty bumpy so I was, felt like I was getting jostled around a bit. I would have rather been going up and down the hills instead of being on this rough road. The cool thing too about this is that it's, it's an out and back so at this point in the race you get to see where you are. So you get to see the pro men, pro women coming back and then you can kind of gauge yourself compared to them and compared to the top age groupers. And so that's kind of a cool thing to see too. After I go around the corner and I start heading back towards Pemberton, I immediately I immediately start looking for my athletes. So I'm looking for I'm looking for Kent and I'm looking for Tim. And I see those two there, and so I know that they're doing a good job. And so that they're still riding, so nothing bad happened to them. And so that that's pretty cool. So now I keep riding along towards Pemberton and thinking about okay, let's get off this rough road. And I'm looking forward to the hills that are coming up. We're up to the next section, which is going to call it number four, and this is, we call this the climb. So this is going to be a climb from Pemberton up to Whistler. Now this is, this is a significant climb, because you remember, you've been, you've been on the bike for quite a few, few kilometers now, you're about you know, 150 kilometers, so you're very far into the race, and you've got to start climbing. So this is where I really appreciate the gear ratio I had on my bike. And what I focus on here is just to focus on keep on climbing, staying relaxed, and not pushing too hard. Now here's a tip too. I found that after a couple of those climbs out of Pemberton, when I got to the top, I was hoping there was an aid station there, but there wasn't. So if you're doing this race next year, I'll load up on water as you're coming out of Pem Pemberton so that when you get to the top, you can douse your, yourself off or just even you know replenish your fluids. This climb is definitely significant and it's, it's a challenge. So you want to make sure that your nutrition is good and so that you're ready to keep going. Um, it was definitely one of the hardest parts of the race and what I did, I just kept watching the, the distance on my, my computer as they tick down. So I'm thinking, okay, how long do I got to go? After you get through the fourth section, which is a climb, then it's relatively flat. I'm going to call that section a home section. So that means you're, you're almost home. You're coming to, towards Whistler. And it's not exactly flat. There's still some rolling uh, hills there, but uh, it's, it's definitely a lot easier than the other hills you just, you just went through. So that's a good section too. Uh, just to think about, it's, that last little bit is not all uphill, so you do have a section there that's not too bad. So that's kind of, a, that was surprising to me. I was expecting it all the way uphill right to the finish, and it wasn't. So you do have a little bit of time to, you know, stretch out your, stretch out your back, get in the arrow position, and kind of recover a bit. One of my favorite things I would do is that when I'd go, after going up and coming down, I would just say to myself, man, this is free speed. This is free speed. You're just ticking off those kilometers, ticking off the kilometers, try to get arrow, and uh, try to do as best as I could coming down those, those hills. So if you're racing next year, practice your descending skills, getting arrow, you know, hiding yourself from the wind as best as possible. So when I'm, when I'm doing Ironman, I like to have some fun pictures. This one here, I've never done this one before, so both hands off the bars and, you know, double okay. Here I am in the old position with the guy behind me doing, um, what, do they, what do they call that? And the guy behind me is uh, photobombing me. This picture here is on the top of one of the climbs, and you can tell that, I, or I can tell, I look pretty tired. And I just continue to keep climbing. 
in these pictures here I'm standing up. Well, why I like to stand up is I like to stand up usually at the top of the hill and what it does is it recruits different muscles, so a different muscle from sitting down when you're climbing up. So you're recruiting these different muscles and you're able to like, get up to a higher speed at the top of the crest of the hill and then that way you can kind of separate yourself from people around you. And it's a great little tip to try and get a little bit further ahead in the race. This picture here is me at one of the, I think it's near the end of the race, uh, on one of the climbs out of uh, Pemberton, and you can see that I'm pretty tired because I got that tongue hanging out pretty far. Coming around the corner here, it was, uh, it was fun uh, listening to this video. Uh, if you don't know, but the person who's doing the video is Kent's daughter, Tatiana, and she did a fantastic job of videotaping for the race. That's Todd. Let's go, Todd! Woo! No, it totally is. So not. Okay, that is, because he's got a bright is. green helmet. Okay, because there's the other bubble shirt guy. Right. <laughs> the other guy doesn't have a green helmet. We're coming back into town with this picture here. I'm back in town. I've almost done the bike ride. I'm so happy to get off the bike. And it's such a funny experience that when you do, you finish the bike component of an Ironman, you're so happy to get rid of that bike after the 180 kilometers. And I always think that I want that bike back at the halfway point in the run so I can finish the run even quicker. But of course, that's not allowed. Now, Kent was a bit farther behind me because he was having some cramping issues, which was too, really too bad for Kent because Kent and I really should be riding uh, pretty close to each other. Daddy! Kent! Tilly! Go, Daddy! Go! Oh, he does not look good. Go, Dad! Go, 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 go! So that was Kent coming around the corner, and it's too bad. Uh, he was a bit farther behind me because he was having some cramping issues on the bike. Now, really, uh, if he wasn't cramping, he should be right beside me as we're doing uh, the bike component. Now, this is going to be a quick interview with Kent with his uh, family, and he's going to tell you uh, what's happening to him. Yeah, we go. I actually, had to, I actually had to stop on my bike at one point because both of my quads cramped and I almost fell over. You can do it. Take your time. Enjoy it's the not race. Gonna be a, it's not going to be a quick run. Go finish your up. Oh, I'll finish. But Drink lots. It won't be quick. The last, since Pemberton, I'd like, every time I tried to push hard on the bike, my quads started cramping. I had this muscle here yeah. on both legs that started cramping. And it would be like, that one starts going... And then I, I try and stretch that, then my quad's going, I'm like, ooh, ah, ooh. What do you think it is, salt? I don't know, because I've been pounding salt taps. Go drink water. I think it's drink just... Drink water. I felt great up until then. Yeah. Well, whatever, it right? Is what it, it is. is. Yeah, I mean... Now, Ken was really good spirits about what was going on, but I just, every time I watch that, it just, it kind of really gets me there because I know how hard he's trained this year. And for him to have cramping on the bike and have such a hard run by cramping, uh, have, having such a run, tough run because his legs are cramping, uh, it really kills me to see that because I know that uh, he was really hoping for a faster race than he had. But that just goes to show you how hard this course is. A lot of people, uh, if you didn't get in the right nutrition on the bike, especially with enough calories and enough electrolytes. I saw a lot of people with uh, a cramping going on, not necessarily on the bike, but especially on the run, because once you start to run and the sun came out, it was hot, then you can really feel your body getting depleted from what it really needs. So let's move on to the run course. The run course is actually one of my favorite parts. And what we do is we start off by running in town and we head off towards uh, Lost Lake. Now, Lost Lake is a lake that I kind of visited the day before and I kind of hung out there in the morning just for uh, watching the sun sunrise. And that was, that was a pretty special moment for me. And it was funny, when I ran there on race day, it was a lot harder going around than it was yesterday. Well, no kidding, right? I just did the swim and the bike. But even those small um, elevation grades going up, whereas I can really feel them. But I found uh, going around there, running on the trails, it was just so awesome. You got the lake on one side, you got trees over here, and you're running on a dirt path, and it changes to um, kind of like a sidewalk path, and it was just, it's such a, a beautiful run. And after you go Lost Lake, then you spend a little bit of time around Whistler, you go through the Nicholas Golf Course, and then you head up towards Green Lake. And Green Lake is where you have the turnaround. And you turn around and come back, and you come back into Whistler, and then you do it all again. And then once you get uh, just back into Whistler, you have the special needs, you pick up the extra nutrition that you want, and then you're off to do your second loop. Now there's lots of great scenery. I love seeing that, uh, that boat. 
uh, and the water there just kind of reminds you of being in BC. And now when I'm running, I try to put on a good face. I had uh, I had my son's glasses on from uh, one of those uh, races we did, uh, Color Me Rad, and I just tried to do the best I could. Now, I found that uh, I was able to hold a pretty good pace for the first uh, 12 or 15K, and then I really, my energy went down low, and I really had to focus on getting nutrition, and so I was forced to walk a bit. And so I would, I would walk and run, walk, run, and then I just tried to do the math in my head to figure out you know, how fast can I get this thing over with. And then I had 12 kilometers left, and the, my favorite thing that I get people to do is, I had about 12K left, I figured I was running at a certain pace, I could be finished around 10.45, the total time for the race. And if I could do that, I would be pretty happy. But in order to do that, I, I had to keep running. And I, I really wanted to walk as much as possible. And so my trick is, is I dedicate uh, an aid station segment to a special person. And I keep them in my mind, and I think about them as I'm doing the run. And when I get to the aid station, I'm allowed to walk. And I'm walking, taking ice, taking water, taking in the sports drinks, and I'm eating, getting the calories in. But once I get out of that um, aid station, I gotta start running again, and I think about someone else. And by doing that, that keeps me to, uh, onto the next aid station, and it gets the race over with quicker. And so when you look at my finisher photo here, I've got both arms up. Now the reason why I put both arms up and I went up to touch, that's kind of what I've done the last few races, I like doing that. But I put both arms up because this year in December I broke this arm. So it was a big deal for me to get this arm up because it wasn't so long ago that I couldn't even raise my arm up. And so for me to finish this race, to even get into the start line of this race was a pretty awesome feat. So I was pretty proud of what I was able to do by having that broken arm. So that's it, that's my race review, and I think if you want to do a great challenging race, Ironman and Whistler is, is, is for you. But if you're going to do this race, make sure you train for the bike. And you gotta train on hilly terrain and get yourself becoming a good climber and a good descender. And if you can do those two things, then you should have a good race. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this race report, and that's it. Thanks and happy training.